Dude, no kizzy on gosh, dead serious right now. I have not brushed my hair in probably like at least five years, maybe 10 years. It's gotta be longer than that. Whenever I moved out of my parents' house, that's probably the last time that a brush has run through my hair. I just don't know that this is, it's just, it's fine. It's straight, it goes, ugh, and it just looks Kind of weird, but I bought this today. It just felt like the vibe, dude. Welcome back to the Lonnie Dose Vibecast, dude, where we take care of the vibe at any mean necessary. I'll be mean if necessary. Or ugly. This is an audio radio internet show where I comb my hair straight and look a little ridiculous on the audio wave file. Dude, this is freaking episode two. Welcome back. Oh, this is my brush, by the way, in case you wanted to see it on the audio file. And I'm not talking about those people who like audio too much. That's a whole nother opinion that I have that freaking, if only there was more hours in the day, maybe I'd get into that can of worms here. Speaking of getting into cans of worms needs a little a little tighten up a little uh i installed some new sound effects too i know i'm talking about a million things at the same time and what are you gonna do about it buddy it's freaking it's freaking the tick tock tick tock it's not stopping for you time is my our master time is the blood we're all bleeding anyway dude. that was the intro so oh, welcome God, back okay. i need to take this away from myself it feels so good though i think i just want a head massager but this will do for now dude welcome back podcast number two they said we couldn't do it i am so proud of us let's go round of applause for everybody involved dude Woo! the button says laugh but they're I mean, they're just applauding, right? My hair feels so ruffled by life. I feel like I could talk to you guys about anything now. Hey, how are you doing? I'm normal. My hair's so straight. I'm a straight... Uh, I play it straight, too. Just like my hair's just the kind of guy I am. You can signify it by the... How I'm... I'm carrying myself. Anyway, let's talk about something, huh? You guys are being kind of ridiculous. I wanted to talk about these new fat vans. You guys seen the new fat vans? I'm sure you have, because you all have TikTok. I know you do. And, uh, freaking, uh, let me see this thingy. Hold on. Just don't even worry about it if you're listening to this right now. I'm barely even struggling visually, but it definitely won't come up on the audio. These are the big fat vans. I mean, if you haven't seen the big fat vans, they're freaking. Honestly, I'm starting to think that our whole TikTok campaign was probably just something along the lines of, let's say that it's getting so annoying hearing people talk about these shoes. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't hear anybody talk about them until I started hearing people talking about people talking about them, which is, you know, maybe I'm just not tapped in. Maybe I'm just not a shoe guy, a sneaker head. You know the vibes. I don't. <laughs> so that's, you understand what I'm saying. The same thing with Rick Owens, dude. They have Rick Owens syndrome. I don't even know who that is. I'm assuming it's a man, but it's also a brand and a company that is apparently ruined by the TikTok kids. I didn't, I, I just don't know. I just know you guys complain about it so much. I just think it's funny that that I wouldn't even know that these things existed if it wasn't for gatekeeping. It's like you're teaching me the ways, but also condescending to me at the same time. Learn me harder, daddy. And now I'm gonna complain about you, little guy down there. Yeah, down the totem pole of bitchery and mild annoyance. So, good luck casting your pod down there, little fella. Speaking of podcasts, dude, Lonnie Do's Vibecast is now available on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, because I freaking figured out how to do that. It wasn't even that hard, dude. You freaking, it wasn't even that hard. But thank you for, for uh, um, telling me I'm a, a good boy and did a good job anyway. Appreciate that, buddy. Good looks. But yes, um, I don't know if it is available anywhere else, but I do, I could put it other places if you have any requests. Let me know, fam. And if you need your hair brushed, come closer. <laughs> Your hair sounds like mm, scraping metal. Is everything okay at home and on your head specifically? That was awful. Holy shit, I'm sorry. But yes, the podcast should be available there and on YouTube, on the Lonnie Dose YouTube channel now. Um, so that's pretty freaking exciting, dude. Um, and I can put it other places. I just have to sign up for accounts to do that. And um, they all, I don't know what they are. So <laughs> like, I don't use Google. Do people use like Google Play podcast, Amazon podcast? I don't know what any I know that. Overcast. Some people use that. I could do that. I could sign up for that. That's, that's I could do that. I have the capacity to do that. Don't even worry about it. I got a hairbrush. I'm just trying to spread the disease that is my voice. I consider each pipeline of, what are they called? Not di not DAWs. That's like music production equipment. That's, what is what is it called? SB, some of the music distributing DSPs, digital service provider, DSP gaming, Dark Side Phil. I fucking keep forgetting what I'm even talking about. <laughs> so about these big fat vans that I'm conspired, that are conspired against us to make them think that they were talked about before they were. I'm on to you, Etnies, or whoever is responsible. Who owns Vans? What is that company actually called? They own like Supreme and Wrangler and owns Vans. Dude, first fact check of the podcast ever. It's called VF Corporation or VF Outdoor. Interesting, interesting. Not really, gonna forget again. But dude, if you haven't seen these shoes, miraculously good on you, but uh, you're probably 45, like me. The Lonnie Dose Vibecast is an entertainment uh, show for 45 and up. They're basically just like the big fat skate shoes that people wore like uh, like when I was in middle school. So I guess like a long time ago, longer than I'd like to think about. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't really understand it in terms of like why they ever existed. 
Besides, because they look comfy and they are comfy, let me tell you. And dude, the first time I laid my eyes on some big white audio, I know some people are so into shoes. I don't even freaking know what any of the shoe silhouettes are called, dude. But freaking it, it, the, the audio ones, the big fat, I mean, I feel like they all looked the same. Like DC, Etnies, audios, all of them, they were just like, you just took a skate shoe and made it humongous just pumped a gigantic amount of compressed air into it and they had a big flappy tongue i don't really know how you skateboard in it is what i was trying to get at like how did that ever make sense like it just kind of seems like if anything it would protect you from incoming skateboards which is ironically not what you want i think you you would want some board control little buzzword you pick up when you hang when you hang it around athletes as much as me out there in the biz, in the sports biz, athletic, athleticism, brushing their hair and such. <laughs> the sweaty skaters. <laughs> you know how the, you know the vibes. But I mean, I always did really like the way they looked, albeit what, I mean, I had no swag as a sixth grader. I did like the thing with my hair where you just spike the bangs up with gel and then I didn't gel the rest of it. So it just looked normal, I guess. Drop, like just hair. So the consistency was not there. There was two consistencies, therefore none. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, this isn't about me and my cool hair, puka shell necklaces or, any sort of fashion choices, but I think, I don't know, dude, these shoes are pretty tight. And by tight, I mean comfy, but also pillowy. And, uh, you know, I buy like one pair of shoes every six years, so I probably will not be investing in any anytime soon, but I look forward to finding out more of what people used to be into through gatekeeping and the grapevine. I'm pissing and coming and Spotify shitting. and Apple Podcasts. Please leave a review, like, comment, and subscribe. Anyways, like I said, I do not have any shoes on my head, so don't even listen to my opinions on fashion. What you should listen to my opinions on is debatable. But I have seen the movie Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, parentheses, 2023, that's this year. And if this is the first you've heard of it, I worry for you. The year, I mean, not the movie, because the movie is pretty bad, and if you're not into just watching every ridiculous horror slasher concept in existence, then yeah, it's, you could probably skip it and live your life regular and... Honestly, it probably won't- it'll be unscathed, uninterrupted, and unchanged. Some people on the internet like things more than me, so if you're a big Winnie the Pooh guy, maybe- maybe that could be, be a thing that it- like it- Maybe all the old women who watch Lonnie Dose, <laughs> if you didn't hear about this movie yet, maybe this is the- Maybe I could bear the privilege of being the first exposure you have to it, cause boy howdy. I said in my, uh, reaction video, I made- I made a joke, but it's kinda based in reality cause it's true. It's funny because it's true. That copyright is a very underappreciated law that we should start loving now, because things are about to get spicy if we don't. This is a warning. Heed my words, you fools. Nah, I'm only joking, but kind of. I don't know, it's interesting to think that apparently Winnie the Pooh's copyright expired in 2022, which is last year, so I was looking the up. Copyright Act of 1976 was extended to protect the copyrighted work following 70 years after the author's death. Got you. So who was the author for Winneth and Pooh? And who was the author for Winnie the Pooh Bear? I guess it doesn't matter. Probably Christopher Robin. I guess, it, okay, so 70 years? That's interesting. Living works and respectively in the copyright duration of the works published before 1978, 95 years. Kind of got there, blah, 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 blah. So the copyright expired last year. So they made this whole movie in a year. <laughs> Not even like a year, probably. Just funny. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And I think I paid like $10, a premium price to watch it in the comfort of my home. Where Winnie the Pooh can't get me. But yeah, the premise of the movie, I think from what I understand there's something something christopher robin um he grows up kind of like toy story honestly like the kid grows up because time goes on he grows out of his need for toys or whatever these animals were to him his schizophrenic compadres hallucination hallucinative jungle bear heffalumps and such i don't know dude clearly the, de the delusions of a neglected child but this isn't about christopher nor his robinsons i don't want to meet him uh, but yeah he pisses P Pooh and piglet off who are murderers now um you you do the math <laughs> So that really is the extent of it. Like there's some magic voodoo nonsense involved, like some horror movies, uh, you know, put in there to sort of make it make sense, but it doesn't. I really like Pooh's mask and Piglet's, I guess Piglet's is cool, but I think Pooh's is really cool with the blood dripping on it. It's pretty freaking cool. And uh, the kills are actually really brutal. Like there's some good gore and stuff. If that's your thing in horror movies, I, I find some of that stuff hard to watch. And some of this, from what I, I don't remember anything specifically. I wish I did, but I remember it being pretty good. There, There's worse out there, but. If you're gonna do like a dumb concept like this, I feel like you should follow through and really commit and make Winnie go poo if you know what I'm saying. Gross. I don't even know what I'm saying, but yeah, I kind of know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, it's definitely a shitty horror movie, but is it, if you're into shitty horror movies, hey, what can I say? But anyway, so they got that movie done pretty pronto and that, that expired last year. Um, apparently also, let's see, any other notable ones that expired in 2022? Bambi, A Life in the Woods by Felix Sultan. 
Okay, so maybe that maybe maybe we'll get a Bambi <laughs> horror movie or any kind of movie. I guess it doesn't have to be horror. I just feel like horror is you know a genre that lends itself to being garbage, for the lack of a better way to put it. I don't know. <laughs> like it's just like a, I just meant that a horror is low stakes and it kind of lends itself well to gimmicks and it could benefit greatly from um, speedy production times and any potentially like, expiring copyright license. I guess you have people like me who will make excuses for you and me. <laughs> I don't know. Am I the problem? Should I not have liked it as much as I did? I mean, I like old Winnie the Pooh. I just feel like as I've grown older, my tastes have changed and this Winnie the Pooh works for me. Notable properties entering the public domain in 2023. Good Night Moon, the book. So that's the one I... I we. Good night, moon. Good night, stairs. Good night, creepy guy hanging out over there, right? That's like that book we let you read after you take the 25 Benadryl. Metropolis to the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I don't know any of these because I'm uncultured. Popeye? Is that like spinach eating Popeye uh, by E.C. Cigar? That's interesting. I mean, I'd be down. I mean, I... <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is really taking a hold of what I am thinking will happen with these. <laughs> I kind of just wish they turned everything into a horrible horror movie, I guess. But I guess this could just mean that people make really stupid Popeye movies, bad Bambi movies coming soon, or Buck Rogers 25th anniversary by Philip Francis Nolan. I don't- Is that a must read? Am I out of the loop? I didn't know. I had no idea, dude. I feel like there's no way they're gonna do a Blood and Honey 2, right? I feel like there would be no interest. <laughs> <laughs> from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think my favorite scene in the in the Blood and Honey movie was that there's a sign. It's just, I think it's just a grave sign. I don't think there's a body, but maybe I'd have to see it again. But it just says like R.I.P. Eeyore, like they murdered him and ate him or something. And I think they mentioned it at some point too. You know, it's kind of all a blur. I'd be exposing myself to a lot of questionable media on a daily basis. What can I say? I got brain rot. Frankenstein expires in 2026. Sorry, I'm just still reading these. I find it interesting, but that's not really interesting though, because Frankenstein is already scary, dude. They gotta make him friendly, I guess. Little House on the Prairie? I mean, now we're getting into kind of like far away, but... That is interesting. Oh, the next... There was another notable one in 2024. U.S. Mickey Mouse and Steamboat Willie by Walt Disney. Apparently that animation was gonna be public domain after that. I don't actually know what that means because it's a specific animation, but anyway. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Speaking of things... How are you? How are you talking? How's my driving? Okay, we gotta do the freaking uh, obligatory beverage review section of the, of the show, dude. Freaking continuing off from freaking last time when we tried the KSI Logan Paul Prome drink. This is the phase up response to the Prome drink. I can only imagine. And I really feel like this is a branding mess as someone who doesn't know, but has an opinion, a visceral feeling inside. And a podcast. Faze, if you'd like to come on and defend yourself, tap in. Cheers. For the audio listeners, I cheers the different beverage because I don't put my lips on anything that I don't agree with. Unless they cheers me. I have no clue what I'm saying. Anyway. So without me telling you to your face that this is a phase drink, you might guess it if you know what this logo is uh, for the audio listeners. It's that, you know, that big T thing with the F. Actually, this might not even... B, hold on, I need to, this is our second fact check of the day. I need to see what the phase logo looks like. Maybe this is a ripoff. All right, I think I'm just paranoid. Pardon my schizophrenia. Okay, so what you got on the front is the big honkin' phase up logo, which is like a TF combo, which stands for phase. I don't know why it's also a T. From the makers of G, which is Gatorade. <laughs> just really afraid of spelling anything out here. But it's called Fast Twitch, which is named after none of these things, which is just, I mean, honestly, that makes more sense with the, traditional phase logo then phase to phase fast twitch except it would be backwards because this looks more like twitch fa anyway i don't know but did they just want to put the word twitch on it because gaming i don't that's why i think this is a mess but anyway it's an energy drink in a bottle so you wouldn't expect that but i mean it's got electrolytes it's got caffeine it's got cool blue papa molly i'm sweating i put push the button it has milligrams of each end of the- See, it's- I can't even make the joke. Social media platforms these days. Anyway, this is the, uh, Phase Up, Phase Rug, Cool Blue Edition. Going into my mouth. Here it is. You know? That really- I- <laughs> I think this might be a little bit of a foreshadowing into all four bottles of this. Ew, that actually looks kind of weird. What the fuck? That is not as- 
colorful as I expected, but I guess I'm kind of thinking more of like by energy drink standards, not by Gatorade standards, which is what I was going to say. I think they're really benefiting from partnering with Gatorade on this because it tasted like blue Gatorade. Get this. I don't know why I blew my load before I even said get this. I'm sorry for that. Little bit of speech ejaculation. Pre-ejaculate. pre cum Okay, this one is, um, uh, energy drink. Electrolytes, I can't even find it. There's so many good stuffs in here. Electrolyte, caffeine, fuck. Strawberry lemonade is what it is. Okie dokie. Yeah, this is way better than Logan KSI and his pals. The prime drinks were super disgusting because it tasted like more flavor than water. Whereas this is the, uh, ideal antithesis. The yin to their failure. Uh, because this, this is, this hits the spot. It's a nice refreshing, uh, water-based beverage with minimal cancer. At least that you can taste. Actually, that one is really good. It tastes like suckers from the doctor. That was the orange one. Kind of weird that it tastes so much like candy. This last one is freaking strawberry watermelon, dude. And all of these have twisty tops, so I can just shove them right back on my shelf and not poison myself with gaming all in one sitting. Yeah, as much as it breaks my heart to support anyone other than my boy Logan, Mavericks for, I don't even know his, does he have a catchphrase? As much as it breaks my heart to do anything, but uh, to say that my boy Logan has took the dub on this, uh, I think Gatorade is better than whoever makes Prime. That's, I have no interest in the FaZe clan or any clans for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I won't phase up. No, I don't think I will. It's 2023, buddy. Come on. Anyway, pretty good. These are pretty good. I can't wait for the copyright to expire on Gatorade so I can make some in my basement and sell it and make it scary and add my blood. <laughs> I don't think that's legal. Okay. Another beverage re review for the books. Imagine writing a book about that, about my bevs. In Epic Gaming Sonic... Uh, come? Hold... In Epic Gaming Sonic the Hedgehog news? Dude, freaking Sega has purchased the Angry Birds uh, game developer Rovio for 700 million money. <laughs> Is it 700 million dollars? 700 million Finnish dollars? Dollars? British or... dollars, but some amount of Angry Birds funny money has exchanged hands between the people behind Sonic the Hedgehog in order to acquire the Angry Birds boys. I'm kind of surprised that Sega has this much money to to just do anything with. Reading through this article over here, which you can't see because this is a podcast. Shout out to Game Rant. Dude, he's freaking kind of explaining it to me like, people in business apparently don't like when you have a bunch of money sitting around that you're not using. So maybe they're claiming that perhaps Sega would like to acquire the Angry Birds boys because it'll help their stocks or something and make it look like they're doing something, I guess, with their money. Which is a, f a good point. And obviously I think it's a good investment. I mean, Angry Birds makes... Uh, I think when they when they put their mind to it, they make good games, or at least, <laughs> you know, they have a, they have made good games before. I'm comfortable saying, even if I can't think of one. But yeah, I guess there's some boring business explanation as to why this makes sense financially for Sega. Blah, boring. I guess they do pretty well for themselves just making games, which is pretty cool. I mean, they make. I don't really know what Sega games do I even pay attention to. Like I've played a lot of their mobile games, of course. But yeah, I'm just I don't I'm not a big Sonic guy, so I guess I don't really pay attention to the stuff they put out. I like Super Monkey Ball. That's pretty lit. That's them, right? Yeah. Crazy Taxi. I mean, that's a classic. Yeah. But they've also worked with Angry Birds freaking before. Hold on. They've actually done like crossovers with Angry Birds before. I remember on some of their mobile games in Sonic Dash, they had an Angry Birds event once or twice. And then I think in Angry Birds Epic, they also maybe had Sonic. I don't really remember what it was, but I know that they've done stuff before. So this doesn't, this isn't exactly out of the blue, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. God, imagine podcasting. Cringe. But while I was doing research before podcasting, it seems like it also makes sense because Angry Birds has not been doing the greatest financially. Which might sound really obvious because they've, they're they Angry Birds. I mean, it's just like kind of a dead meme at this point, I guess. It's like, it's, uh, their brand is pretty old. It's like 15... How long ago did Angry Birds come out? Probably like 15 years ago, dude. And then it was like all the rage for a long time. There was freaking... There's probably tens of landfills filled across America just stuffed with Angry Birds lunch boxes and plushies and tents and flags and pillowcases dude it was freaking everywhere and uh i think the first movie for, did a re did really good for them but then the second movie did not do very good so i think that they were maybe not doing as well financially so then maybe sega is picking them up for i mean it's 700 babies it's, it's a lot of money man that's a lot of birdies that you're pissing off that's a lot of feathers you ruffling that's a lot of feathers exchanging hands here i don't know dude it really could have any interesting implications for the future of sega games and movies could it though i guess if they made a movie with sonic in it that'd be kind of interesting would they that doesn't make much sense though dude the angry birds fandom has been uh apparently unusually ruffled they've been like pissed off at rovio for a long time and i 
I thought it was kind of interesting, so I'm gonna try to explain it to the best of my understanding. So like I said, the second movie didn't do that great for them, but also they've been sort of struggling just for ever kind of because like i said angry birds is an old franchise so it kind of got more and i could be wrong about this about the timing but i think from what i understand they popped off before free to play was really the norm in the app store and mobile gaming and gaming <laughs> and everything <laughs> angry birds was kind of already popping when free to play was gonna when starting to take off so they had to sort of transition from become from being this 99 cent iphone game becoming a, a whole ecosystem that you can spend money on forever and capture these big fat whales like that one guy in the movie that i, I don't even know what that movie's about but i'm just assuming that it, anyhow i'm big fat ben stiller and angry birds wants to get me but they simply can't because i'm too slippery and people just do not care much about angry birds anymore if they, they fell off dude what can you what can you do second movie i mean it wasn't like insanely worse than the first movie i mean the bird does dab in the first like five seconds seconds of it which turned me off the whole time and I never recovered zero out of ten but it wasn't that bad aside from that and everything they've kind of just been trying to sort of cater to both sides where people like they'll make new games that are free to play of course and adapt to the new payment models and everything going forward for the longest time has been free to play but they have their old games that people have been like sort of mad at them for as they sort of phase it out and add more free to play stuff and I guess from what I understand the original Angry Birds the paid version that everybody probably has god knows how many phones are in those landfills that i talked about earlier that have angry birds installed on them just exponentially more plastic that has been infected by the angry birds franchise than we could ever fathom but they've been sort of trying to please please them the old people by keeping that game alive or whatever for their you know their core audience while also trying to push forward and get with the times um with their new games. I guess, and I don't know when this happened, at some point I noticed that the paid app store version of Angry Birds had like some weird name. It was called like AB Classics or something. Like it just didn't have Angry Birds anywhere in the title. I'm like, that's kind of weird. And then they changed it again, which is kind of weird. I mean, Rovio does this sometimes where they'll change the names of their games. That's not really that unusual or anything. Like I've just noticed it over the years when I'm making my videos. I'm like, oh, that used to be Angry Birds Stella. Now it's Angry Birds pop or something same game just different name and kind of changes the icon and what have you but they changed it to like ab classic and then they renamed it again to like red's first flight and the only reason you can tell it's an angry birds game is because of the icon it kind of makes it seem like a bootleg because <laughs> that it's the app store i mean there's a bunch of bootlegs in the top charts all the time so kind of weird but apparently the reasoning for this and i found that there was a thread on reddit about this which i've since lost the link to i apologize to nobody for anything but basically what they were explaining was that they changed the name of this game because they actually lose money having the paid version available because you paying the 99 cents or two dollars or however much it is to play red's first flight angry birds classic etc <laughs> like that two dollars or whatever they lose money on that as opposed to getting you to download angry birds 2 for free and putting you in that free to play ecosystem i guess on average is how i understand it which is like super funny and weird <laughs> Like, you can't even... At that point, it's just like, dog, just pull the plug. But that's my opinion. I guess the other people disagree. Man, I can't even call my child Angry Birds anymore because Angry Birds is Angry Birds. And I don't want... I don't even know what I'm saying. But it's a, it's a strategy that I guess works. It's a little cynical, I guess. Dang, like you can't even just use the name perhaps you're a little lost in the bird sauce if you can't even use the name of your franchise anymore because i don't know i honestly just think it's a it's a, a weird little tidbit that i thought i would share <laughs> but if you've ever noticed that angry birds was called something weird in the app store and didn't know if it was the real game or not this could be why corporate greed sure but is it a big deal not really. When the Angry Birds uh, copyright expires in 70 years, I hope I'm still around to make the horror movie about it. I will shoot you in the eye with a slingshot, piglet. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. Thank you guys for freaking listening to the Lonnie Dose Vibecast. Like I said, you could freaking get this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or the videos on YouTube if you want to watch me saying the words. Thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Helps me out a lot. I always appreciate it, though. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.